for the first time all summer, a new face coming to the Cincinnati Cyclones. He is Jake Bricknell, a guy who is new to the clones, not new to pro hockey, getting ready to start his third season with us here in the Queen City. And uh, Jake, we'll, we'll dive into a lot, uh, especially in this interview, being that you're the first face fans may not be familiar with. So there's a lot we got to cover, but... Um, you know, I think why not the why not start with a little elevator pitch? Tell the the Cyclones fans just I, I guess a little bit about yourself and and the kind of player you like to be on the ice. Yeah, no, I I think I'm uh, you know power forward. I like to use my size and get in on the forecheck and cause havoc on the other team's defensemen, and while also uh, you know producing on the offensive side, I like to use my shot and. Uh, speed and try to make things happen with myself and my teammates. Well, I think power forward is always exciting. People love seeing guys drive the net. That sounds like your kind of game. Uh, let me, uh, let me ask you this as well, Jake. Um, so again, to just fill in the blank spaces here, uh, Jake Bricknell coming to us, uh, an Ontario native, but uh, coming to the Cyclones from Manchester in, in the EIHL, uh, which is overseas, uh, over in the UK. Uh, tell us a little bit about that first, Jake. I mean, that that's, uh, you know, you're, you're a guy in your mid-20s. Um, we have seen this path before, a minor league hockey player taking their talents overseas. Um, but I still am always curious, you know, what goes into that? Uh, I imagine as a youth, as a kid playing junior, you get used to being a little bit uh, away from home. Uh, coming to the ECHL as a rookie out of college, you get used to being away from home a little bit more. But being over the pond, so to speak, that's uh, that's a heck of a journey away from uh, from where you grew up. So so take me into that. And and also, I'd love to know, and I think the fans would too, just the overall experience uh, overseas. Yeah, no, it was, uh, it was in Manchester and it was, yeah, no, an unbelievable time. Uh, great, great city, great group of guys. Um, yeah, it was, it was cool to go over there and experience a different culture and different style of hockey. Um, yeah, no, it was, it was an easy transition, uh, English-speaking country and, you know, just, yeah, nice people, nice culture and good hockey over there. So it was, it was fun. Let, let me put you a little bit on the spot here. Uh, fans, people love to travel. They love to to see new things. you got a chance to do that. So you talk about it being a bit of a different culture. I imagine you're somewhat thankful that it was English-speaking. You didn't have to learn a new language. But um, w w when you mention different culture... Are there things that are different? Point, point out, I mean, obviously you're a Canadian boy, but I think we learn more and more that, you know, North America in general, you can you can sometimes just kind of easily lump the two countries into one and say, okay, this is pretty similar here versus there. But over in the UK, a little different. Um, again, to, to, to teach us a little bit. What, what's yeah. what's one new thing you can tell us that fans who haven't been there would, wouldn't know? Yeah, no, especially in Manchester, having the, the soccer teams, Manchester United and City, they... They're big, big soccer fans over there. So it was kind of like the soccer kind of atmosphere is lots of drums, lots of chants, and which is you don't see much of that over in North America. So it was, that was pretty cool to play in front of. Tell me, uh, well, I mean, you mentioned that uh, and you talk about soccer. Did you get a chance to go to a uh, Manchester United game? Um, yeah, we got a chance to go to a Manchester City game. It was, it was pretty fun. So, yeah, it's crazy crowds. What about, I mean, for the for the EIHL, are you guys getting big crowds ever there? I mean, the energy, is it just different? Um, yeah, no, Man Manchester, we had a, a smaller rink, so we we got around two 2,000 fans, but it's, you know, it's the culture over there and the fan base was pretty cool. 2,000 felt like much more than, much more than that. So it was pretty cool. Obviously, uh, you know, bigger, bigger teams have, more more fans obviously but uh yeah i know it was it was a great experience that was well you talked about 2000 and how it can feel like more i mean you know this you've you played a little bit you know, roughly 40 games uh, in the echl and i'm sure you know from some of the arenas that they're not all one size fits all some will uh, you're coming to cincinnati it, it's gonna fit 15,000, uh but then you go to another arena that maybe only seats four or five i always think of kalamazoo i don't know mm -hmm. if you played a game there yet or not but um that's a that's a city that you know it's a smaller building but if they have if they're half full which would be around 2000 you can sit there and and if you're if you're not looking and you're just hearing you would think it's a sellout yeah yeah no it's definitely crowd, crowds can give us the momentum and it's it's a lot more funner with 
fans in the building and being loud and yeah. Well, when you come to Cincinnati, you're going to feel that energy and uh, it will be a lot more than 2000. I can tell you that Jake. Uh, so in, in shifting to that, let, let me ask you this. And I, I mentioned it before we hit the record button. This is a question I love to ask for anybody who's making the choice that you are making. And that is to leave overseas play and return to North America. And so I'm going to ask you a two-parter, try to answer them both. Uh, one is why now? Why now decide to leave overseas and come back uh, to, to the ECHL? Uh, and the second part of that question, why here? Why Cincinnati? Tell me how the opportunity to become a Cyclone uh, opened up for you. Yeah, no, I, um, yeah, to answer your first question, I had the chance to, the offer to go to Manchester and experience a, a different hockey culture and living culture. And, you know, it's, it was always something I wanted to do growing up is go, you know, travel and play hockey. It, that always uh, intrigued me and I had the opportunity to do so. And obviously I did that. Um, but yeah, coming, uh, making the switch back over, it's personally, I felt it was a bit of unfinished business. I, my, my year in the East coast league wasn't, didn't go the way I kind of wanted to, but, you know, talking to the painter, it's, um, it seems like a good fit. I'm looking forward to being an impact player right away for the Cyclones. And I uh, heard nothing but good things about uh, Cincinnati as a city and as a hockey franchise. So you mentioned Painter. Tell us a little bit about that. I mean, you know, sometimes, and we learn this, the hockey community is such a, a small community, no matter how many countries and continents the game is played on. It feels like an everybody knows everybody kind of sport. Did you have any prior relationship with Jason Payne? Um, who who initiated a contact point between the two of you? I mean, how, how how quick did that conversation go? Are we talking one phone call? Are we talking a couple? I don't know how much contemplation went into it, but um, if you're willing, and some players like to keep the cards to the vest, we totally will respect that. But um, what what can you peel back in terms of the conversation and the contact initiation between you and Jason Payne? Yeah, no, uh, yeah, I grew up in a hockey family. I've, uh, my dad's a big hockey guy and my uncles are as well. So it's, you know, just connection. We grew up in the same area. We're only about 20 minutes, half an hour apart from our hometown. So it's just some f familiarity there. And, um, yeah, it was, it was pretty quick, which was good. I, I expressed, I've been in contact with them for a little bit and, um, I expressed my interest in coming to Cincinnati and being a cyclone and, he reciprocated that right back. So it was, it's nice to, nice to be wanted and get a good opportunity to have a good season personally. And as a team. Is it exciting too? I mean, you know, any player and any person can look up uh, hockey DB elite prospects. We're going to get into that about you, by the way, in a minute or two, but uh, it, looking from a team side, I mean, I, I know for me, uh, you know, bias maybe because I, I, I'm employed here, of course, but even prior to coming to the Cyclones, you look up the team and I thought to myself, man, this is this is a winning team. This is a hockey club that knows how to put wins in the column and banners in the building. You know, obviously the two Kelly Cups, the team would have loved for more, but several divisional championships, several deep playoff runs. Cincinnati last year had the second best record in the entire ECHL. Do you as a, a player, and I guess we'll we'll call it a free agent because it's that time of year, uh, are, are those things you look at that are uh, maybe add to it being a tantalizing spot to to come to yeah for sure it's uh yeah just reaching out to you know former teammates of mine that may be playing there currently or former like just you know just seeing how it is living wise and how how everything is over there and obviously having the year that that they did this year uh, or last year um obviously want to be a part of that and be an impact player and try to do that again this year and hopefully go further. You've stressed a couple of times already in this conversation that you made it clear that you want to be a cyclone. Well, now you are a cyclone, Jake, but uh, you talked about the ECHL and um, I I'd love for you to, I guess, shed some light on that. You know, you talked about your rookie year and for fans that don't know, you played uh, one season with two teams, Kansas City uh, and, and the Maine Mariners, uh, Kansas City Mavericks, Maine Mariners in this league. And you said, you know, it maybe didn't go exactly the way you would have liked it to. What can make it different now, uh, almost two years later? 
Yeah, no, it, it, it was a good experience. It was just, uh, you know, going in my first year of pro, it's uh, coming off of COVID season two, may not have had the the best start I wanted to. And um, yeah, maybe, maybe a little bit of consistency and stuff like that. And, you know, I started to find my way kind of in Kansas city, then at the, at the deadline near Christmas kind of got traded to uh, Maine and, kind of fell back into that, you know, unf- unfamiliarity and just uh, consistency at stuff. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I think I made some big strides to improve that. And, um, yeah, just come come, uh, come every day ready to work and get better and help the team get better. All right. Well, I, as we're continuing our conversation, again, this is Jake Bricknell, the newest player for the Cincinnati Cyclones, getting ready to hop in here with the team for training camp for the uh, 23-24 season. Jake, fans get excited when they see a new face. And uh, I think everybody knows about Hockey TV, Elite Prospects. They are not secret websites. So they're going to see your name. They're going to look you up. And I think one season in particular is going to jump out to them. So let's talk about it. OJHL, Aurora Tigers, you're the team's captain. And in the 2017-18 season, 35 goals, 99 points. That is unbelievable, and I'm sure it's something that you know you, you'd like to see get replicated here at the pro level. But first off, just just for the sake of just just for the sake of having your own little victory lap, I mean, talk to us about that. That had to be one fun year for you. Probably every night felt like a good night. Yeah, no, no, definitely. It's uh, yeah, no, I, I was very thankful to you know be the be the captain there, and um, we had a great year. Had a bunch of bunch of good players, and yeah. Um, yeah, no, it was a fun year. Uh, good line mates, and one, one of my buddies, Stephen McLean, plays on the Cyclones, so it's it's nice to be reunited with him and try to try to replicate the year that we had there in Aurora. Yeah, I was gonna say. So uh, we're actually, if I'm correct, and and we're pre-recording this. Of course, this will uh, come out here in a couple of weeks. I think Stephen McLean is being announced like a week before you. So this was perfect timing. Um, and, and I'm sure it'll be exciting there. I, I was wondering, like, I, I don't know, obviously you play with, you know, 20 different guys on a team. Did, did you shoot Mac or a text at all? Or did he text you? Or I mean, has there been any communication between you two at all realizing, Hey guys, I, I think we're gonna have a little bit of an Aurora reunion here in Cincinnati. Yeah. yeah no. Uh, yeah. We definitely did. Uh, did chat, chat a bit um, before and after the signing um of mine um yeah no super looking forward to it it's he's a great guy and love him as a teammate in aurora and i'm sure i'll love him again in cincinnati so looking forward to it for sure and with so many returnees i can tell you right now man th- this room was so good this dressing room such a great place to be and i imagine someone like yourself is going to fit right in there and uh stephen mclean the uh the the player of all of 20 some games of the Cincinnati Cyclones will have to be your uh, your elder statesman to introduce yeah. you to everybody in that dressing room. <laughs> uh, you know, Jake, as we're as we're nearing the end of our conversation here, um, one other layer that I want to touch on is uh, this last name that's going to be across the Cyclones jersey. Uh, it is not the only time a Bricknell has been a part of the ECHL. I don't know. How much can you tell us about Corey, your, your uncle? And for fans that don't know, uh, Corey Bricknell played uh, parts of, I, I believe, six seasons as a pro in the minor leagues. A uh, couple of ECHL teams. I always love when I get to look up uh, these guys. It's just amazing to see how much time changes in 20 plus years because uh, I don't have them all in front of me. But uh, it's just some throwback names for our fans that have, have been watching the Cyclones for a very long time. Uh, Corey played for the Columbus Chill, the Huntington Blizzard. Uh, I think it was in the UHL, uh, was the what, Saginaw slash Ohio Gears. Um, just, just some fun throwback names there that uh, unfortunately no longer with these leagues. But, uh, you know, I, I'm curious, Jake, again, just having somebody in your family that's that's been there, that's done that not just in this league, but overall lived the life of minor league hockey because the veterans in this league, the guys on this team, you'll grow to meet Louis Caparuso, Justin Vibe and company. We'll talk about how longevity in, in a minor league is so hard to have because of all the change, yeah. all the turnover, all the travel, you know about that. Uh, yeah. Have you ever had the chance to talk with your uncle uh, about this lifestyle or, or, or talk at all about just his experience? 
Yeah, no, for, for sure. Uh, yeah, he, he texts me uh, quite often and gives me some advice uh, just on through the ups and downs of pro hockey. You know, there's there's always those. So, yeah, no, he's a good good guy to bounce uh, ideas and questions off and get feedback that wise. And yeah, definitely, definitely a little different lifestyle back then to it is now, but uh, definitely some stories. But uh, yeah, no, it, it's definitely beneficial for me to have him and his past experience. The Cyclones are going to get their season kicked off on Saturday, October 21st. Uh, Jake, there's going to be more than 2,000 people at Heritage Bank Center that night, and uh, that is first face off against the Wheeling Nailers. Fans, if you don't already have your tickets, this is must see hockey. This is a must see game, and you're going to get the chance to be uh, among the first few to look at the Central Division banner that will be raised in Heritage Bank Center's rafters to uh, commemorate which was uh, what was an unbelievable 22-23 season for the Clones. And we certainly hope the next year is going to be even better. And uh, Jake Bricknell, the latest signing for the Cyclones, hoping to be a part of an even better season. So, Jake, we appreciate you taking the time here in the summer. Please keep enjoying it, my man. And uh, we'll talk to you again in a couple of months. Awesome. Appreciate it. Thank you.